over the last few decades, there's been a lot of new information on throwing, arm care, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, exercise equipment, you know, from plyo balls to medicine balls to Jaeger bands. And it, it can get confusing. And, um, you know, unfortunately, when I was growing up, it was still kind of the, uh, you know, in Western Maryland, just, you know, get a ball out the bucket and start throwing. And, you know, my arm blew out freshman year of college. Uh, you know, I threw fairly hard, but it's just one of those things where um, looking back at how my arm was conditioned and the patterns of, you know, throwing that I did year in and year out, it, it's no wonder it blew out, you know. Uh, it was a lack of discipline. So um, one thing that we're trying to do here at North Henderson, but at the same time I feel can apply to any young baseball player that has ambitions to – keep a strong arm and, and learn the most they can about pitching and try to progress. Um, you know, I, I think that organization and routine is, is just a pattern that brings success in life in general. So these uh, Excel sheets that I'm going to show you today, you know, this is going to be guidance for our players who want to try to track and plan their workouts because it can be overwhelming, you know, trying to keep track of everything. So the first thing You'll see here, there's four tabs down here. The first one says J-Bands. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, we like Jaeger bands. So, um, we, uh, we actually have these guides and these instructions, uh, printed out and hung up on the fence near where the players warm up. And, uh, you know, the idea is to try to create intent you know, let them know that like, Hey, this, you know, this is something you should take seriously. Like, so the information's there if you want it. Um, as far as the, these, uh, you know, sets, reps, exercises go, it's, you know, we've listed about 15 or so workouts, but we have room for more. Um, you know, I think bands are something you can do every day. Um, but you might have a different, uh, goal to accomplish you know if you're getting ready to throw and it's a heavy throwing day you know uh, we like j-bands uh, as a means to prepare to throw there's really three main reasons to use them uh, one it uh, brings blood to the areas that you're about to work out intensely and blood is you know you want good blood flow and, and blood brings energy and takes waste away and um, it's just important to get those muscles pumping and burning before you even throw a baseball. Um, two, it strengthens, you know, the same way the weight room does. It's reps and sets, and you can increase those and decrease those based on your goals, and they will make you stronger, especially if you do have intent. Um, hopefully you understand as a player out there listening what that means. Intent means, like, you are thinking about what you're doing. You're going slow. Like, you want um, – you want meaning, not efficiency. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is like, you're not trying to get it done. You just, you want to accomplish the goal of bringing blood to the area, getting stronger. And then, you know, the third reason to do these as well, it's, I feel the perfect litmus paper to figure out how is your arm feeling? How is your body feeling? You know, and you can set your workout uh, and your throwing limits based on any pain or soreness that you, you feel on a certain day. And it's a good way to track that that um, you know that particular pain and see what you can do to try to alleviate it or strengthen it over time with the right exercises. So, um, you know, if it's the off season, it's something you can probably do every day. You know, it's it's just know yourself. Like a lot of these exercises, you can do two to you know two sets, maybe ten reps, and and just you know if that gets too easy, add another set of ten, or you know do two sets of fifteen, or um, just understand like your body and, um, in the off season and, and, and actually just anytime you start something like this, it's okay to toy around and, and try to track what's working for you. Um, if you set up two sets of 10 for, um, you know, like side extensions and you can't get through it without shaking, you know, just stop, step back, you know, know the next time that you'll do two sets of five, right? Those five with intent are going to be better than, uh, you know, two sets of ten that are extremely inefficient and rushed. Um, so just throughout the week, you know, um, 
some days you're going to be using bands to recover after a hard day of throwing, just, you know, doing some recovery exercises, helping stretch through those muscles. Um, there's going to be days where, you know, we tell our guys, we only got two and a half hours of practice. Like this is a smorgasbord of information, but we don't necessarily have time to, uh, make it part of those two and a half hours each day. But if you get there half an hour early or you have fourth period gym or, uh, many of these, it's just do them in the morning. You know, you can like wake up in the morning, do your, your band exercises. Um, just try to do some stretching and, you know, uh, before practice, like, you know, you might spend a little bit more time on plyo balls or, uh, you know, just doing a little extra stretching or, or just, uh, you know, cut your, um, J bands in half, you know, it's, it's just a matter of like trying to figure out what works for you, what makes you feel stronger, what helps you recover quicker. Um, you know, do you start to see velocity gains? You know, there's, there's so much to think about. Um, but again, the best place to go is, is to the creators of the actual, um, bands. Uh, you can see in, in these pictures here, like they actually use the cuffs. Um, <clears throat> I've seen other guys talk about taking your, your two fingers, your pointer and your middle finger and just looping them into the, uh, into the, uh, uh, the plastic ring that connects to the cuffs. You just, again, figure out what works for you. Um, if you're doing it, it's better than not doing it. And, and the other, the other thing with, I got to stress <clears throat> to our guys is look at the athletic positions in each of these workouts. Like you're trying to train your arm while in an athletic position, while engaging the rest of your body, because it's how you play baseball. Like you have to engage your whole body when you're throwing, um, you engage your whole body when you're fielding, when you're hitting. So <clears throat> just understand that posture, where you put the clip in, all that stuff's important because if you're going to track these reps and, and the data is great because, you know, five, six weeks goes by and you keep track of everything. You don't have to do all these. You just make a, a routine that works for you, but you'll look back and you'll see like, all right, man, over six weeks, I've done like freaking 30 sets and all these reps, you know, hundreds and hundreds of reps. Like, you know, it's, it's evidence of your path, you know, and if you're getting stronger, getting better, seeing better results, like, it helps you talk to your teammates and, and talk to your coaches and just like share this information like hey look this is working for me so if you're getting frustrated there because you're not pitching well or you're you know staying at the perpetual like 68 miles per hour like do something about it because look i've tracked this over three months three years whatever you know you have it's like this is a lot of data but it shows one thing like i've gotten better and here's what i've done to, to do it so um the next thing, this is something that's kind of controversial for me still. Like, I don't know how I feel about the plyo balls sometimes. Um, to me, I feel like they're pretty straightforward when you get on drive line and you and you get on, into some of these, um, you know, guys like Trevor Bauer. It's like, I, you know, I, I, I trust these guys. Like, they work hard to understand the science. And um, I put less exercises on ours for North. To me, like, I don't feel like this is something that uh, every player should do. I feel like this is for your three or four or five throwers, pitchers who want to have good mechanics or interest, understand there's a biomechanical relationship to this. Like, you're trying to learn how to use your hips. Like, I like reverse throws um, because they activate the hips. You know, it's not too much stress on the throwing arm. It really emphasizes uh, explosive uh, feeling with those hips, uh, the pivot pickoffs. Uh, again, I, I think they're a lot like the reverse throws. You're not taking again those guys that don't have good throwing mechanics don't understand that like you're not getting a full arm extension here. You're not going equal and opposite. You're just letting that heavy ball drop down behind you and let your hips fire. You know, again, it's it's emphasizing internal external rotation. Um, but when we get into like 10 toes, which is essentially like figure eights, rockers, roll-ins, walk and wind-ups that get a little more intense, <clears throat> I noticed that <clears throat> driveline recommends, uh, you know, throwing each ball, uh, like two at a time, um, you know, all the way down to those like three ounce balls. Uh, I think excluding the heavy ball, it's more like your, your colored ones, the blue, green, etc. Um, and that's where you're trying to carve arm path and create velocity. And, and again, if I see, I have, you know, we have certain kids in our program that don't throw, uh, 
correctly yet. And, um, you know, they're athletic, but at the same time, until they put intention on changing the way they throw, um, some of these exercises could probably hurt them, you know, really hurt their elbows. Um, I do like the heavy balls and the way that, like, you would go through, like, throwing progressions. Um, so that's another thing to think about is uh, if you – I've seen some guys, like, strictly with the green or blue ball kind of going 50 70%. And, and to me, that, that's like if you're trying to put intention on your movements and carving out good mechanics, like that's why I like the heavy ball. It's like you have to be athletic, and it carves out those neurons of like how your body should be moving. Um, but again, I don't know. Like there's certain players, if I see them doing this, um, I got to question their intent and just make sure they understand that like, hey, don't hurt yourself. Um, it's... Yeah, so anyway, medicine ball, that's another new thing we've added. Like, I've always worked with medicine balls, uh, especially in high school with, with basketball. It's like there's just good exercises to create explosive hip and shoulder um, energy. And, and that's just, like, you need that to be good in any sport. So medicine balls are, you know, they're kind of universal. But in these exercises here, some are more, again, just universal, working on, like, for example, I like this website here. It's called the... Uh, um, Rockland Peak Performance, and, and they really, I like how they use uh, some diagrams here to show the muscles and, and kind of put an emphasis on like what mechanics are being used um, as, as far as explosive energy. Uh, good videos too, they're very quick, they just show how to do it. Um, but again, some exercises are more like just to create that explosive hip energy, and then there's some that seem a little bit more... Um, uh, some of these, these, uh, for example, this uh, I like this guy here, arm pitching development. He's got some really good stuff on med balls, but it's more, um, more for your mechanics of pitching. Like there's some hip drive that really is significant to how pitching works, and uh, you never really get into a throwing action, but it's again creating that separation with like shot put and slam and uh, um, you know overhead type explosive um, exercises. So. Um, everything I've read seems to say like off season, it's like, Hey man, get after it five days a week or something like, you know, go ahead and go heavy, use it. Like you'd use weightlifting, put rep sets together, uh, in season, maybe it's something more like two to four days a week, you know, uh, doesn't mean you have to do the same reps every day. Some of it's more to like carve out again, carve out movement just to get you ready to throw, you know, others might be like, yeah, I really want a good intense day, you know, and that might lead to a. A good recovery day or a light throw the next day so um <clears throat> you know i like the medicine ball stuff especially for guys that say they want to throw harder like hip inefficiency uh, lack of hip mobility uh you know that internal external rotation separation of hips and shoulders like that's your velo um some kids you can once you make a correction with their hips or uh just their alignment you know they'll jump up two miles per hour you know it's it's the next thing is like learning how to do that new movement quicker, faster, stronger, more stable. And that's where a lot of the medicine ball stuff will come in. So uh, we have four and six pound balls. Uh, so again, kind of look at how your week works with games, what your weekends are looking like, you know, when would be a good day to try to do something more intense. And then, um, you know, we try to throw as much up on Google Classroom as we can. Um, any players that in our program that approach me, it's, you know, that I'll, I'll get after it for them. But for the most part, what you've seen so far, as far as bands, plyo balls, medicine balls, uh, we're going to get into some throwing stuff here soon. Like it's, it's really just, it's, it's kind of up to the player to figure out what works for them. And I'll just try to be as honest as I can about like what I'm seeing as a pitching coach. So, um, <clears throat> the last thing we have, and this is something that's going to be, I, I still got to figure out how I want to get this into our binders. Um, it's a Monday through Sunday, uh, you know, week long throwing, uh, not so much like a planner, but like, um, throwing, uh, inventory sheet. So what I mean by that, like it's the week of, um, uh, let's say we're going in the next week is the 28th. So we say two twenty eight twenty one. 21, oops, 22, man, it's the future. Um, <clears throat> first thing you'll see here is like walking field goals, um, 
I don't know if kids are buying into it. I think it's great if Tom House talks about it or Jaeger guys. Like, you know, there's a few kind of go-to throwing people I look at. And if things make sense, they make sense. So walking field goals is simply what it sounds like. You put your shoulders up high, you know, elbows square, you know, like you're making a field goal. Um, and you just walk around for a few minutes at the beginning of, of the day or in the hallways or whenever, sitting in line at the lunch line before you grab a, a tray. I don't know. But it just brings blood to the shoulders. Um, again, gets those um, muscles engaged. It, you know, promotes posture. And that's a big thing with pitching and shoulders and feeling those scaps, you know. Um, so, again, if you do it, throw an X in there. You know, say yes. I, you know, if not, take it off. Like, if you're never going to do it, you think it's the dumbest thing ever, like, just psh, take it out, you know. Just don't even need it. So um, the next thing we list here is football. Um, throwing a football is not, you know, it's not something that's supposed to be a huge part of the throwing day, in my opinion. But I, I like adding it. But everything I've seen with it, it's, it's, it's a, I believe, a 16-ounce ball. I don't know if that sounds right. But it's almost like a progression in those plyo ball workouts, you know, the weighted ball stuff where I'm not necessarily doing this 100%. You know, I like the two stances out of it. I like kind of the ten toes stance where you're, you know, facing your partner, chest facing them, uh, ten toes to your partner, and just working on shoulders and hips and just a nice toss, like keeping your shoulders high, you know. Um, and then a few throws where I just have my feet underneath of me, like maybe a little shuffle or step behind. And again, just throwing through, you know, high shoulders, good posture, feeling my scaps, just carving out good mechanics because I'm throwing a heavier ball. Um, some of our players will grab it and just, you know, like I hate to say it, but I got uh, a couple players whose arms are hurting right now, and, and I've seen them the last few days of practice. Like they just grab the football. It's like go deep, and they're just whipping it. It's like, okay, let me grab this 16-ounce ball without doing any bands or anything and just start throwing it as far as I can. I mean – in gym class, like, it's up to you, I guess. But here, like, to me, it's just like, wow, like, don't do that. Like, that, it should be, like, after you do your bands, after you do a little medicine ball, stretching, like, whatever your thing is, go ahead and grab the football and throw it for, like, like two minutes, you know? Um, anyway, throughout the week, like, just what did I do? You know, what did I do on this Monday? Did I do – I did my walking field goals. I threw the football. Uh, today was a long toss day recovery no i didn't it was not a recovery day right throwing duration man we let it loose man we threw for about a half an hour 30 minutes um know your arm you know if you if let's say you throw for like 10 minutes and then uh like you know just whatever fun goes a little bit here there throw throughout practice but after practice you throw for another 15 like you know you can put intervals in use a slash like um just kind of keep track of how much throwing, like consistent throwing, like attentive throwing, good mechanics, good posture throwing. Um, arm health notes, right? Any soreness, arm felt good. Um, I need to warm up more before uh, I throw my bullpen. Um, you know, just kind of keeping, you know, if you did throw a bullpen, put that in there too. Um that might be something to add here. Maybe I should put that in there, like which days are bullpen days. Um, if your arm's not feeling well, tell us why. Like, what did you do to recover? Did you use lacrosse ball? Did you do a, like 50, you know, just 50, 60 feet light toss? Um, the thing I like here, it's, you know, two things. One, looking for patterns. As the weeks go by, like how much did you throw? Like what is it that's working for you? If your arm is hurting, what do we take away? What do we add? Um you know, that kind of goes back with the, the other three things too, plyo balls, bands, and, and medicine ball. Like what else can we do to help create strength, uh, quicken up recovery? Um, the other thing too is this something that when I was working in the showcasing industry in the early 2000s or mid, early, mid 2000s, um, I would go to a place like Miami and do a tryout and there's like 60, 70 kids, and they're all throwing 85 plus. Like everybody's got a cannon. Um, and then you go somewhere like Connecticut the next week, same thing, 50, 60 kids, and 
maybe you got like three or four 80, 80 plus arms. And a lot of it comes down to throwing all year, right? So this is something you can do all year and really emphasize like, hey, all year, like you don't have to throw every day, but you should have some sort of throwing arm routine all year because that's how you get a stronger arm. It's like, you just do it all the time. And uh, you know, you got kids down in Florida who are throwing 85, 86, still sitting on the bench because everybody ahead of them is killing it, you know? Um, that's why here in our area, you know, the velocities that we see, it, it usually is about 80 miles per hour when you get into the harder throwers. Um, there'll be a few that'll get higher than that. You'll see people climb in the mid 80s, um, late, you know, high 80s here and there. Um, but it's not common, you know, and a lot of it is because Western North Carolina, where we live, is it's kind of in between. Like, you know, a lot of multi-sport athletes in small schools um up here in the mountains it gets you know we do get a little chilly we lose a few months <clears throat> but again wh where do you find the time to throw indoors outdoors um you know i encourage you guys to uh track your data because um you know like we're always gonna be posting stuff like today we just posted this about trevor bauer um his recovery secrets like I mean, he's one of the best. Like, why would you, you know, you got to want to know what this dude's talking about because I got two of our best arms on our team right now, <clears throat> you know, are sore. And it's after really the first bullpen or so. And it's it's just a matter of like, all right, man, like, what can we do? Like, how do we prevent this? Like, you know, but it's not as a pitching coach. And I feel like this is universal, you know, no matter where you're you're trying to track your arms, like, you're doing inventory on your players like you don't like you can't change anything they're doing you can only change the environment around them uh you know change the suggestions like that's the cool thing about being a coach is like you're playing the game too like our game's different than their game they got to go up there and try to get ground balls and fill the zone and strike people out you know we got to figure out how to create an environment that can get the most out of them you know it's almost like teaching you know like you gotta like trick kids into learning so um you know it's like some of the stuff we did today it's more arm recovery you know we got kids who are sore so we got um you know exercises here trying to teach players uh, i like this guy a lot he's arm pitching development AR arm um just seems to have a, a really good thing going on um so i love guys that share free information so, um, you know, these are just exercises that are there for you, especially if you want to play the game for a while. Um, really like this one today we found. It's on lacrosse balls. I'm just trying. We have our catcher and one of our better, harder throwers has got a sore bicep. So, like, I texted this to him today just because, you know, I, I've already had pitchers in college tell me that this is kind of a go-to for them. Um, using a lacrosse ball to try to knead out the pain. So um, I'm interested in velocity, but I'm not interested in blowing people's arms out. So um, blowing my arm out was kind of on me and not having, you know, I was ignorant to the fact that there's a way to take care of your arm. Um, so I was throwing, you know, probably high 70s, low 80s into my senior year. And just that arm trouble kept coming back. And, uh, you know, I never really learned much about pitching. Just went up there and threw hard and knew how to hold the laces tight. And so, you know, a lot of pitching potential on our North Henderson team, but a lot of it comes down to uh, being patient, knowing that, you know, a lot of success is exponential. You're going to fail for a while before it gets better. But just pay attention to the signs around you about how to do things right because uh, if the evidence is there and it's obvious on how to do something right, and you ignore that, like that's a pattern you're going to take into other aspects of your life, and then society gets a little mucked up. So let's try to make it a little better. Um, but anyway, hopefully this is helpful to anyone that's listening, hopefully our North guys. Um, these will be showing up in uh, folders here soon, and if there's any questions, please let me know. We'll be adding a lot of uh, data sheets as well as you pitch bullpens and in-game uh, you know, so there'll be velo charts and location charts, et cetera, that we're going to start placing into your binders. So, well, uh, thank you for listening and, uh, yeah.
Take care.